how are you all? Lovely to see you. It's so nice to be back here and to be part of this wonderful spring festival. And it is spring-like today. I don't know how it is with you where you are, but it's beautiful here. Quite happy with all of this, loving it. I'm going to do this and I'm going to charge out into the garden and do some gardening. Welcome. Are you enjoying the festival so far? Did everybody have a good day yesterday? We've got lots and lots and lots in store for you during the course of today and all day tomorrow. Lots to do. Competitions and you've got demos like this and we have, um, oh my favourite bit, my favourite favourite bit is give a home to a hurt book. So I just can't resist that because of course it's wonderful isn't it you've, you've got the choice of all these books that um, are just maybe even a little bit damaged and it gives you the chance to look after an orphan so it's a good project today we're going to look at our unicorn now you know my unicorn he's here and he or she it, it depends because don't forget they're magical so they can change it don't, you know that's irrelevant whether they're he's and she's and today he has gone on holiday. So I was thinking about lockdown and how we've all been at home. And wouldn't it be nice to think about the summer and a holiday? And therefore my unicorn is, is away and he's traveled. He's had quite a bit of traveling to do. And so his little feet are sore and he's lying down and he's dipping his toes in the water. So join me today for this demonstration. We're going to do him in marker pens and I'll turn you over. I'm going to flip the camera and I will explain every Everything step by step. This is for all, all abilities. So don't look at it and think, oh, I can't do something like that. Yes, you can. And I'm going to show you how. So let's go and join it and do it together. I'm just going to turn the camera around. So close your eyes if it's a little bit wobbly. I don't want to upset anybody. And I'll turn some lights on so that you can see plenty because that's quite important, isn't it? whole thing's pointless if you can't see what you're doing. So this is the book. This was my book and this is How to Draw Unicorns. And it really is in simple steps. Here we go, look. So all the unicorns you've just seen behind me are here in the book so that you can go through them step by step, phase by phase. There we go. That is available from Search Press all good bookshops and Amazon, of course. But today we are going to have a little go at something different. Now, I always, always use good paper. It's really, really important. If you're using marker pens, use a paper that is really, really up to the job because sometimes you find that you use something that is too absorbent and as a consequence, of course, the, the, the pens just run into it and run away from you and they bleed too much. You need a paper that isn't too absorbent so that you can blend the pens on top. And I don't think, I really, really don't think that you can beat this. I've tried all sorts and this is my favourite. So I would recommend that. Now the pens I'm using today are style file markers. You can use any kind of marker you like. Just because I use this doesn't mean that you have to. So if you have Copic pens or any other kind of pen like Sharpies, it doesn't matter. You use what you're comfortable with. These are rather nice. They've got the nice kind of wedgy end that enables you to get into nooks and crannies and paint wider lines. And then the other end, we've got this fine point so I can paint the detail and work with that come in lots and lots of colours. I don't know how many um, in total because of course they're always expanding the range but um, they're a good pen to work with and they're a very good price point so that's quite important isn't it. And when you're working with this kind of um, pen make sure that you have something underneath. Please 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 don't use the dining room table because you'll be grizzling. Whatever paper you use, you will get bleed through. I'll show you later, but it's important to note that you do not want it to bleed through and to land up here on your table, seriously. I did that the first time. I have a glass drawing board under here. This is glass. 
and even with glass it marks the glass and I had to get spirits out to, to remove it so just saying to you please be careful the first thing I did when I was thinking about colouring it I just used a scrap of paper and I went through my pens to see which colours I thought would be suitable so that's always a good plan give it a trial see what you think first and for this today we're going to need a rubber a 2B pencil, and I like, I'm not being fussy and specific, 2B is a soft pencil, and it means that it gives you the chance to rub out more easily. It doesn't leave too many lines on your paper. And I want a Sharpie, and I'm going to use a fine point. Sharpies particularly, because they are better with marker pens. They don't bleed quite as much as some, as the, some of the others do. Right. Are you ready? Shall we go? We are going to start with his nose and the, pic the picture that we're drawing, I'll just show you so that you've got an idea of where we're going with it, is this. Okay, so I found this picture on Pixabay and it's a horse lying down and I thought to myself we're going to paint him with the water rippling at his feet and we'll have a drink by the side of his head. I thought about putting a hat on him, shading his face, but in actual fact, that wasn't a very sensible idea because it would mean that you wouldn't be able to see the features and I want you to see them. That's the whole point. I want you to be able to draw them. Okay. Over this side of the paper, I want to come in here and we're going to draw the top of his head. And this shape is like a C shape and we're coming up probably to a third, just above a third. And mm, it's, it's not a quarter, is it? So maybe a fifth of the page. And we're going to do a C shape like that. You don't have to be too precise, everybody. And then come round. I want that. Now, the same distance as this, so imagine that to here, we're going to do the round shape for his muzzle. It's not as big as this, but I want to come in and round and do that. And that's going to be his nose, his muzzle. And then you're going to imagine that you're blowing bubbles from, um, you've got a little pot with a little dipper in it with a round circle and you're going to blow bubbles. And the shape that you make from the bubbles comes from here and it's going to land up about there. So not the top of the circle, but down the side of it like this. Imagine it's got little horns like that, so it's this one. And we're going to do quite a large bubble. So bring it up and round like that, and like that, and that's your bubble shape. You're going to paint, draw a bubble. Then simply, simply, you're going to take from this corner and you'll bring that with a little curve into it like that down to here. And then I want to do the same on the other side. And then that gives us his face. Easy, easy. Now, looking at this bit of this funny curve here, come out through here. So draw a line as though you're doing that. And then halfway down from here, and then we're going to do one oval shape like that. And we're going to put another one next to it like that. These are his knees. And then come down and we'll have one here. Now you're not really going to see the leg that's underneath because it's hidden, he's got it underneath him. But down here, his ankles, we're going to add, so the same distance, that distance here again, and we're going to put a smaller shape and then a small, another small circle. They're his ankles. Imagine in that line here, there will be another ankle there. And then we're going to see the other ankle. I'll show you the picture so that you can understand what I'm doing. You see, you've got one, two, three. You can't really see this one. There's the other one here there and there, look at that. So there are our shapes all ready and waiting. So we've done that, we've got his knees and his ankles in. And then all we've got to do is join it up from his hip here. 
And this has got to have a bit of a curve on it like that. And then it comes in down to there. This one, now this, it doesn't come straight. That slightly, slightly curves like that, all right? So you've got this kind of chicken leg shape. And here, this one curves the other way like that. And then like that, so that's his other leg, that's his leg behind him. And then we're going to join them up to his ankles. So from there, curve it in a little bit and then back out again. Same again, in a little bit and then out again. Because they really, you know, the, the fine horses really do have quite spindly legs. This is why it's so dangerous when they're racing, you've got to be careful. And on here, this is just from his ankle, the start of his foot, and we'll put the hooves there in a minute. So just do it a little bit at a time. From this leg here, this is his one of his front legs, the one nearest to us, we're going to bring this up, bring it up to his body like that. Bit of a curve there, bit of a curve. And then you're going to bring it all the way up to almost halfway up the body like that because that's his shoulder, all right? Same here, from here, bit of a curve inwards and then bring it up, bring it up. And you're not going to go as far as that. You're going to do that and give it a bit of a curve because that is the start of his chest. This one, believe it or not, is coming down to this one here because his legs are crossed. So we're going to do that and we're going to do that. We'll straighten it all up later. This is the leg that's behind where his legs are crossed. So what we're going to do with that is just bring that same up to here-ish. Bring it up to there. All right, so almost as though that joins that. And then the next thing you want to do is imagine where that would come if you were drawing that leg up through here. So just use your imagination to take it through there. And then this leg would come up, 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 up to there. All right, so you've got his legs crossed now. That's good. We need to do the same as we did here. Just add those little shapes so that we can put the hooves on in a minute. So they're almost just like a skirt shape. And then leave that be and we'll come back up here and what we're going to do is put his two little ears on. Look at that curve and you want to think about that if that's halfway, come away from halfway and you're going to put it here on that tip, on the curve of his head here. And they're triangles, so just come in, down, and then here, up, and down. I'd like to make that a bit wider, actually. I didn't make that wide enough. Wider ear there. So you can see now that you've got your horse in this lying down position. Then we're going to start to twiddle it. Okay, we want to put the hooves on. And you're looking at the most peculiar angle at some of this. And I, I thought that this was quite deliberate because it would give you an idea of perspective easy perspective. I want to curve, if that hoof is coming towards us, we're looking at almost the underside of it. So that one's going to curve up that way. And you're going to do a bun. Look, it's just like a bun, isn't it? Hot cross bun, sitting sideways. This one, now, how about this? It's ever so slightly behind. So we're looking at the top of it this time. I want to bring that round that way, which tells us that you're looking at the top. Curve it round behind the foot like that because the hooves are a bit bigger than the leg. Bring it down and then we're going to do that round shape here. Round, round, round and bring it up to there, All right? So you're looking at the top of one foot and then you're looking at the back of the other one. These here, let's just keep this simple because the feet are quite easily seen and they're a little bit further away from us, so that makes them smaller. So we do that and we paint, we draw them in a little bit smaller and that pushes it away from us. I want to imagine that we've got a bit of tail here lying on the sand. So we'll do that later. 
And then I want to put in his nostrils. And really, they're two big C's. Two big C's. One, like that. And there's the other one, the other way around. So one the right way, run the wrong way. And then we want to make him smile. So the shape I'm looking at is a W. So in and round, up, like that. And then there. So he's smiling. Makes him smile. The other thing you can do to make him smile is to curve his eyes. Now his eyes are closed and his eyes are here where this lumpy bit is. All right, so that would be his eyes. And in here, we're going to put them in that way, like that. And it makes him look as though he's got his eyes shut and he's squinting a bit against the sun and all's right with the world and he's smiling. So that's lovely, happy with that. Now, with the horns on a unicorn, there's an easy cheat. I used this when I had to paint the book. And I bought myself a toy horse, a model horse. And this is a bit of blue tack. I thought about asking my husband to do something clever and putting a horn on it, but I knew how that would work out, so I decided against it. Blue tack's good. And that means that whatever angle I'm looking at him, it gives me an idea of the way the horn points. Therefore, when I thought to myself that he's lying down, but his head is actually pointing towards me, isn't it? Like that, I can see both eyes. So that means to me that this horn is coming out here somewhere. So we've got to think about that. You're looking at his face like that, aren't you? Okay. So I thought to myself, the horn on a unicorn is between the eyes, on the forehead, that's the underside of it. So if we come up here and we do this kind of thing, I think we've got quite a dip. And, and it's not long. And the reason for that is because there it's long, looking at it this way. As you look at it like this, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and stubbier. So I'm not going to make that a long horn. And keep that quite short and then we will start to twiddle and fiddle a bit what we'll do is we'll give him his mane so that's going to come down there round the side of his face and I'm going to curve it round his face and round the horn like that this can bring it up over the ear a little bit and we'll pull that down around his neck to make his neck look interesting and imagine it's tucked down behind his face there so we'll bring that through like that. And it's lying on the sand. And here we're going to tuck it round his horn as though he's tucked it behind his ears and then bring it round the side of his face. Okay. Next thing we're going to do here is just draw a glass. So this will be one side like that. One side, make it a decent size because I mean, you know, he's, he's a decent sized unicorn. A soppy little glass wouldn't do him any good, would it? And then I want to do that. And we're going to put a straw in there. Shall we put a straw in? So through, right through, so that we can make it see through. Up and round, curve it. Be one of those curvy straws. Like that. And then they have this kind of thing going on on the bend, don't they? And we'll put some drink in it. So just put that through there. The C, you and I are going to freehand it in a minute. So don't worry about it at all. We will just do all that free with our pens later. Now I need my Sharpie pen. And I want to come in here and I notice this blight has leaked. So excuse me, look at that. So all we need is a tissue. Now that's my fault because I've, I've not been storing it correctly. Whenever you buy yourself new pens, look to see what you're supposed to do with them and how you're supposed to store them. These pens are supposed to be kept flat because if we keep them upright, all the ink runs down to one end and then you'll find that this end isn't as good as it should be. So it's just worth pointing out. Let's start with what we know and what's easy. I'm going to come round here. Now that shape continues right round his tummy, right round to his front leg. All right, we want to put in his thigh, just go round the bobble of his knee, round the bobble of his ankle. Let's do the other one. They're just there to give us that shape, that 
Horses have knobbly knees. They really do. I think that's a little bit thin. So I'm just going to thin that, thicken that up a bit here. I think I painted, I drew that in a little bit too thin. The next time you see a horse in a field, do have a look and you'll see that they've got these really knobbly knees and ankles. And as I say, they're such fine tuned beasts that it's the legs and the ankles that the um, trainers have to be so careful with, of course. And this is why, you know, rabbit holes are an issue. I've got lots of neighbours around here who um, who keep horses and uh, rabbits are a bit of an issue because they're worried that the horses will drop down a rabbit hole and hurt themselves and break their legs. So it's just something that needs to be thought about. There we go. So we've done that. Ignore all the, as I say, ignore all the circles. The tail. Come on, let's be fun with the tail. Give it a wiggle. Just give it a wiggle. And there it's going to be in the sea. So we'll just frizz it up a little bit like that. I want to think about his face next. What we need to do here is just get the sides of the face in. Come around, down around his chin. And then up here, in a little bit, out. And let's put the C shapes in, like that. Let's do that lovely W, his smiley face, his eyes. Now what we can do here is just open them up a little bit, like that. So that he's just looking at us through his eyes and he's just squinting at us through the sun. If you're not happy about getting that shape straight, just use a ruler for that, that's fine. No worries. I often do because I'm not always convinced that I can do that properly. I know me. Every now and again, I have a wobble moment, you know, when it all goes terribly wrong. So we're just doing the outline of the hair there. There you go. And then that comes across here, across his body. Lovely. Ears. Now, horses have the most delightful shaped ears. Let me just show you again. Look at that lovely little curve in there. So do you think we can get that in so it's it's rounded in and up to a point? And then it comes down like that, in and round again. Look at the gorgeous shaped ears. This ear, we're looking, this one he's got turned sideways. He's listening to something over here. This one, he's looking, it's looking and listening to us. So it's down and round. And then I want to come round here like that. So this ear is pointed towards us, listening to us. Let's get the glass in. That's the next priority. And again, if you're not convinced that you can draw that nicely, just use a ruler. And I've drawn mine straight on because then that's easy for us to draw. Those of you who are art students will know that the bottom and the top should be curved. But for now, I would suggest that for the younger viewers, it will be much easier just to keep that nice and straight and flat. And truly, everybody, that's all we need to do. So I've just used the Sharpie Fine Pen for that because, as I say, I know that that one's a good one and it will be permanent on the paper. I'm going to start up here with the rubber because this should be dry now. When I'm doing this... Um, professionally I will draw out and I will leave the ink um, probably whilst I have lunch or I have coffee because I really really like to make sure that it's dried it worries me that I might come in and I could potentially land up smudging it when you've gone to all the trouble of drawing something beautiful you don't want to land up making a mess now I've drawn that really quite hard with my pencil with quite a bit of pressure because I wanted you to see it. If you're at home and you're doing this, can you just ease off a little bit because you will land up with pencil marks as I have done. It doesn't matter in this instance, but if you're at home and you want a beautiful drawing, it's worth just thinking about that. And to take my 
rubber off, I just use a brush because I, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to deafen you. If I use my hands, I'm not always convinced that my hands are as clean as they should be. If, it, if it's a hot day and my hands are damp, I don't want any of that oil on my paper. I just don't want it. So I always, always use a brush. You can see how well used it is. I notice I've, I've forgotten a few um, marks here. Look, we've forgotten his chest, bless him, look. So we need to bring that down round through there, okay? And the other thing I've missed is the line of the drink. I'll tell you what we could do. Should we do some bubbles in it? As though it's fizzing. There you go. All right, so we're now on to the exciting bit, the colour. Oh, I love this bit. I've decided, in my wisdom, or not, that we're going to make him a Palomino type of horse. So I want to use these lovely sort of browns. And if you've got a set of marker pens like this, the basic rules always are one light, one medium, and one dark. All right? So this is what I've done here. I've just gone for three colours that give me three tonal values. And the long and short of it is you come in with the lighter colour and we're going to paint all of him this lighter colour. And these are brilliant because you can just come straight through and block it. Don't scrub too much over your pen lines because if you do that, you will find that you move it. It will eventually move. So just come over easily. Don't worry about coming out of the lines here. It doesn't matter. You'll find that with a good pen, this kind of thing will dry and it will dry flat. If you're not convinced, just go over like this. It'll dry even, you'll find. And then I want to come down here and pop his legs in. I quite like this style of pen actually, because you can fill in quickly. Lots and lots of lovely pens on the market. You can um, pay anything you like really when you look at the different options available to you. You have, these are the style file. I also have um, Copic and I have Kuretake and they all have their own benefits and their own drawbacks. I like these because I can look at the numbers and I have the colours on the top. So immediately when they're in the, um, all in their case, I can see what I've got. Not so easy with Copic, but I must say, I do like the Copic brush. So, mm, tricky dicky, isn't it? What do we like and what don't we like? Just being careful with those eyes. I don't want to scrub at them too much. As I said, I want to move the ink. And that colour that we've put on there, basically, is our highlight colour. And with these, it's quite important to kind of get in there whilst that is still damp, because it makes the blending easier. So now we've done this colour, we go to the next tonal value. And we use the wedgie bit again, this chisel tip. Um, we're going to start to put some shade and shadow on him. I want to imagine that the light's coming from over here somewhere. So it's coming in that direction. Therefore, my plan is to put shadow. I mean, when you're doing it, it doesn't matter. You can put your shadow wherever you want to put it, let's be honest, but just make sure you're consistent so that it doesn't look strange and weird. I want to come round his back, round here. And what we do, whilst that's still damp, I land up putting both brushes in my hand, both pens in my hand. You come back to the light pen and you scrub. And that scrubbing blends 
that colour. So you don't see it initially, just you have to be patient and you have to have faith. Because when that dries, you'll see that you've got quite a decent blend in there. I'm going to come into this leg. So if the light's shining down, it's shining on that front. It could be shining here, but I want shadow under here. And I'm ignoring the knees for a minute. I'll explain why in a second. Under there, and under there. Oops, gone out of the line. You'll have to excuse me, it's difficult when I'm trying to brush it. Much easier when you're sitting here on your own in the studio and fiddling with something like this. So there, we've done that leg. That's really good. Okay. And then I want to come in here. This leg is in shadow, all of it, the whole lot. So I'm going to come in there and just block it all in with the mid-tone pen. Just block it in. Come round, gently, gently. And there, this leg casts shadow on that leg. There we go. So I'm coming back into the light colour and using the tip of the wedge and just scrubbing at that. I need to put some shadow down this leg now. Now in immediately we're going to lose some of our definition down here, but that's all right. I'll explain in a minute what we're going to do. There we go, so down there and a little bit in there. Back to the mid to the light colour. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And you see now why that's easier to do that when it's wet. If you allow that to dry, you can do it, it's not, not a problem. But if you allow that to dry, you come back into it and you really, really have to work it to get it moving again. So it's easier to do it now. I want shadow here. Now, where his hair is on his body, anything that's on something casts a shadow. And I've got this funny, funny saying, and it's, it is, when a thing is on a thing, it's the thing that puts the shadow on the thing, all right? The thing that puts a thing on a thing is the shadow that's under the thing. And that's a mouthful, isn't it? But it's true, it's true. I need a little bit of shadow here because that leg again is casting a shadow on here. So I come into there and I'm going to put shadow all down underneath that, his shoulder and a little bit in the corner. Now, if you don't feel confident to do that with this big, big chisel tip, go into it with the smaller end of the pen. That's what it's for. I'm going to soften that. Now, you see, I didn't blend that well enough. Can you see how I've got the hard line there? All I've got to do with the lighter colour is go back in and scrub it some more. So you can keep blending, it's okay. But I, had, I just haven't blended that enough. There you go. You can keep at it, it's fine. Righto, that's good. Let's put some colour on his face, bless him. So this side of his face will be in shadow, coming in under here. So all of it. Are you saying, what did you put the colour on underneath for then? Because they layer up and you do see the colours underneath each other. And that's quite important, really. And it also gives you something to blend into rather than just white paper. It makes it, it does make it easier. Now, see the hair? I know we've put shadow on that side, but that hair is also on his face. So the hair, this side, will cast shadow. Won't be as big. So I'm going to go in there with the smaller pen and do that. Come back, smaller edge of the lighter one and blend that in, there we go. Lovely stuff, happy with that. If you need any more blendies, go for it, just go for it. Now, knees, knees and his legs. The ankles I'm going to leave for a minute because I want to, those to be quite a bit darker. But round his knees, I want to take this darker colour and I'm going to make them curve. I'm going to give you a highlight in the middle here but we want to have shadow here and here 
let's make sure we get those knobbly knees right. So pop your shadows in, do a bit at a time, bit at a time. I'm just blending with a smaller pen because then I stand less chance of going over the edges. This time I'm blending the knees. You notice the way I'm using the pen? That I'm going to do like that, blend it up onto the leg. But around the knee, if I do that, it gives me that highlight in the middle. And that's what I'm after. Like that. Go round, round, round. And then down there. Because the direction you use the pen in does make a difference. So look at these knobbly knees. We've done it, look, we've done it, you and I. Round here then, give that a knobble. Just going into the smaller pen to show you how the difference works between the chisel tip and the finer tip. Now that's darker, so that blends in so much easier, look. And then here, I'm just coming round like that. There we are. Now, it's a fact with this type of horse that you have the darker parts of his body so that's going to be his legs and his muzzle see that don't like that blend so it's fine we come in with the lighter pen and we just soften it some more cover the whole area so that you don't get areas that are left and hard you can blend as much as you want to this is up to you you can get rid of all of these lines you just have to keep going backwards and forwards between the two pens that's what marker pens are all about. And this is why, of course, that you need to have something underneath your work. You see it's bled through. Really, really important. OK, I'm going to the darker pen now. So I can put away the light one for a bit. And using the dark one, I want to come in now and put some real darks in here. And that's going to involve this area down here. It's in deepest, darkest shadow. Down there. Right down to there. And this one is blended now using the medium tone. Like that. All right. That also will be dark down through here but what I want to do everybody is put some dark on the bottom parts of his legs because I want to make this leave a little highlight on his ankle like that because these horses have darker legs don't they so I come back to the mid-tone and I'm going to use that to blend And he's going to have little dark feet with a highlight, look. There you go, look. And we'll do that to the bottom, to the back legs as well. So come up through here. So we just go around the ankle like that so that we leave that light in the middle. I'm going to do his face in a minute. So if you think this is hair raising, wait till we get to the face. Not frighten everybody. Frightens me. There you go. It gives him little dark legs, doesn't it? I like that. There we go. So just blend that away. And I'm going to use the smaller tip to come in there to do that. Just want that highlight. Look at that. Love that. Blend that a little bit more. And if you're not happy about the blend, you go back to the very light colour and then you use that to blend that in and it just goes away vanishes look just vanishes so any of these if you don't like them go back to the, the color before so that was the light color and you could blend it all the way until you're happy so if this is all a bit sketchy I'm going to do that make sure that you do all of it and it all just goes away and that will still dry lighter, so you'll still have your tonal values. There you go. So you've got this lovely, lovely um, versatility here. This is the light colour, so I'm going into that to soften all of that with the light colour. 
like that. Magic, jolly good. Now, a few more darks, everybody. I just want to add a few more darks. I want to come up here and I'm going to put this down the side of his face, down here. I want to see his eye, that will, be high, that will have highlight. But down through here and I want to bring that across his muzzle. Leave a little bit of a highlight there. And where his mane is, that, as we said, will leave a shadow. So pop that in as well. Then we go back to the mid-tone and we blend that. Like that. And then I'm coming into the light tone. So you see that's what I'm saying, I have them all in my hand at the same time. And with the light tone, I blend everything that's left so that every line just vanishes, all of it. His ears, bless his little ears. I'm going to come in there with the mid color and I want to add shadow down there. And his hair, the mane is on his ear, so that will cast shadow. And this ear is really, really quite dark, so that would be that dark. And then the one that's against, as it's against the floor and this is in his ear, let's go to the darkest colour, pop that in, like that, and then I need to blend this, don't I, so it's back to the light one. It's just a case of keeping a handle on the three tones that you're using. And that is really looking quite decent, surely good. Do we need a bit of darker shadow anywhere else? Probably could do with I'm going to drop a little bit of dark in here. Let's have a think about it. Let's let's consider it. This is going to be quite dark against the ground, isn't it? And if we're going to have sand there, it would be nice to think about a bit of shadow there, I think. And I'd like some shadow in here to define all of this. His leg on his body would cast a shadow, all right? And I'd also like to just define that a little bit more like this. So I go back to the mid-tone to blend these. And as I say, if you don't like the blend when it's dry, you just go in and you cover the whole area again. So it's repetitive, but you if you do that, you can get the smoothest most beautiful blends. It looks like printing. It looks as though you've done it on the computer. So you see, I'm going right back to the light one now and I'm going to just whoosh that over there. So you get all the technical terms with me. There's a new word, whoosh. And I just want to, I'm going to do that. And I want to just do Okay. And that will dry. It will dry and it will dry smooth. So you've got to just have confidence and faith in that. I wanted to show you an interesting technique with his little legs, his feet. To put his hooves in and to give the impression that you have a highlight on the hooves, I'm coming in there first off with pale grey. This is my pale grey. I don't have to be too fussy about that because I know I only want that in the middle of the hoof, actually. So I pop that in and then I'm going for a really dark grey and I want to introduce that as shadow. Everybody look light against dark, dark against light. You have to do that. So if I'm going to make that dark because it's down behind this hoof, that puts it behind it, I've got to keep the edge of that light. It's just the way it works. I can curve that hoof back round by putting some shadow down there. Same applies to this one, but I mustn't do it to this one. I'll lose my definition. And then of course I can go back to the lighter grey and I can blend like that. Just blend the colour in. Get in there, really, really work it. That's it. It's like colour pencil, really. You're going in 
and where you're you're turning it back into um, you're using the spirit in the pen to activate it again so that it will move and then the other thing that we can do with this if you um, want to advance with it this is the clear marker it's all it has is the spirit in it. It's, there's no colour, nothing. But you can use this to create highlights. We can take it and we can come in there and it pushes the colour away. It goes in, it almost bleaches it out. And so by doing that, look at that. We can just introduce these dear little highlights on his hooves. So this is a whole nother ball game. You can go back into the artwork and you can do this and it, it takes the colour away. Bear in mind as well that with something like this, I can also come in and I can remove any mistakes I've made to a certain degree. Where you've gone over the edges, if you come in with this marker pen, it pushes the colour back and away and it, it pushes it back. You just got to watch out that you don't overdo it. Do it in a couple of stages because it will release the ink in the black and sometimes the black bleeds back on you. If you're worried about the black, don't do it. Leave it alone. Just use your pencil marks and then you can put the black ink in afterwards. Why not? That's a really cool way of doing it, isn't it? but I don't think you'd see what I was doing if I did that, so I, that's not how I want to handle it. I'm coming in here and I'm going to pop his tail in. I'm not in the least bit concerned about going over the edges because I intend to do that deliberately in a minute anyway, but I just want to put a bit of sand in first. So that's there. I thought we'd have a nice golden horn, shall we? Give him a golden horn. I think that might be a plan. So I'm just coming in, scrubbing in the colour, because I want to put some darks in there in a minute, and I'm also going to um, fiddle about with it and make it a bit fluffier than it is. So that's why I'm not worried about the edges. So pop that in, and then come into the dark one, and again, where that tail is behind the body, and to make the two stand out, ooh, look, really dark. So get in there and get that edge really nicely sorted out. Nice sharp edge, look. And we're going to wiggle that around a bit. And I want to do the same here, so I'm just coming through like this. Where the horn is, there'd be shadow underneath it. That's going to make the yellow stand out when I put it on. And where it curves round under his face, that's going to be really dark. And then you come in with your lighter grey and have a bit of a scrub. So it'll soften all of that. And don't worry about the marks because I'm going to come in in a minute and put some real hair in there with a fine tip. Just want to soften it, soften it, soften it. That's all I'm doing. And then I want to do the C next. He's going to be lying here with the water just lapping at his feet. So again, three tones of blue. The pale one to start with, and we're coming, and I want it to be, I want us to be looking at him at an angle. So the water is going to be lapping all the way through here. He's got his feet in the water. Wiggle it. Give yourself the movement of the sea. As it goes away from you, now he's a clever one, look. As it goes away from you, see that? I'm, I'm, brain thinking one thing, mouth doing something else, pen doing something entirely different, and I'm working ahead of myself here. I've just thought to myself, this here, we can make it look as though the glass is see-through, look. I'll show you in a minute. Perspective. As this comes towards us, this, these lines get wider, smaller as they go away. This will give you perspective. Bring it from there, bring it down, and widen these gaps. Like that. And it will make it look 
as though this is going off into the distance. So we're going to do that to start with. Some of these are going to fill in. So just come in. And again, the lines are good and the marks in the paper are okay because they're going to make it look as though it's the movement of the sea. So I'm quite happy with that as well. So just scrub it in to start with. And then we're going to take our middle colour, our middle blue, which is this one. And I want to come in under the waves with that. And there's no right or wrong way of doing this. I just want to make sure that we get the lines through. You're putting the waves in. It's the ripples on the edge of the beach. Like that. I've got the loveliest dark blue in a minute. You'll love the colour. Wait till you see it. I'm going to leave a gap there so that we can put some light in, in there. Leave some white areas because it will make it look as though there's light shining on the sea. Let's put that round there. So this is now where you sharpen up all these little toes. If you've gotten out of the lines, you can come round that carefully, carefully. Do a better job than me, won't you? See, they get smaller as they go away. So it's thin, 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 and then put the pen down and then bring the lines wider. Now I want to show you this lovely dark blue. I have got this, look. Lovely bluey green, look at that, oh yum. So leave light, leave light in the sea. That's it. Because that will make it look as though it's glinting. And that's what we want. Do you see how that's coming towards you lying there now? We've really, really got the perspective on that. Please with that. Fill that whole lot in because the sea's deeper here. Like that. Just block it in. And then you see, if you wanted to, you can come back with, this is your blender pen, and you can come in with that and you can start to blend the whole lot. And you'll find that that will soften all of the lines. So that's another option if you want to do that. And it doesn't give you, immediately you don't see too much of that and it doesn't seem to do very much. But trust me, when it dries, it just softens the whole thing. I'm not sure I want to do that really because I quite like the jaggedness of it. I've got an idea with that as well for later so I can show you later on. What I do want to do is find a very, very pale yellow because I'm thinking to myself, I'd like to give the impression of the sand that he's laying on or the sand at the edge of the beach. And our problem here, of course, is the fact that, bless him, I've done him in this pale golden yellow and it might be a bit difficult now to make the two stand out. So we might want to use a different kind of colour. If we're thinking about somewhere like, what, what's this like? That's too dark. Oh, you see this tricky, isn't it? Why didn't I think of that, everybody? That's better. If I use this, this is a kind of um, orangey yellow. And it will give the impression of it being a beach with um, that's made with seashells. They tend to be not so much yellow, Sandstone will give you a yellow beach, but if we go to a beach that's made um, of seashells, it tends to be pinker. And again, you don't need to be too precise. You can fill that in and you can block it in solidly if you'd like to. But I just want to give you the idea for now, because I don't want to run out of your time, because I know you've got other things to do today. And other events to join in with. I hope anyway. So I'd like to just bring that through there. You see how easy it is to cover the, the, the ground. 
And if we use the marker pen, the one that um, is just clear fluid, I can come around the edges of my horse, all around here, and I can soften all of that by just coming in and using this to take the edge away. And it will bleed it all out. It will soften it. So, you know, you can't see that immediately, but that takes the hard edge away. Here you can see what's happening. So you can blur the whole thing out, which is quite fun. Quite fun. I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow under here because that will give the impression of sand being under the sea or the sea rippling on the sand. So that's a good little plan as well. There we are. We need to put in his lovely yellow little horn here. I want to come in and just put this golden yellow on there. And again, we need to curve that, go in for a darker yellow and just bring it round like that. And I'm, I'm using the shape of the horn. Curl it, curl it like that. So that it gives you that movement and the shape of... That would be lovely if you had something like gold paint to do it with a gold paint. That would be really nice. What I need to do, if we're going see-through here, is that. And then I'm going to use a pale pink. And with the pale pink, I'm going to gently lay it in over the top of this. We'll still see the blue. But it will give you the impression that it's see-through. Shall we have, what colour straw, let's do something really, really different for the straw. Because if we go for a colour that we've got here, it's going to get lost. So I need a colour that's not too dark, that's bright and will stand out. So let's try this. This is green. Oh yes, look at that. Oh, look at that. That works, doesn't it? That's cool. Now the one thing that we forgot, I notice, is his little nostrils. He hasn't got any nostrils, bless him. So with our dark, this is my dark grey. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to darken that and darken that. And then the colour that's behind it is that dark brown, okay? So I'm going to grab the dark brown and that will soften that shape so that it's not too hard. And then finally, finally, the last thing I want to do here, using the dark grey, I'm just going to come in and loosen all this up because at the moment, I don't like the hard edges. So I'm going to come in and pull his mane through and we can pull that out if you want to into the sea and I've taken the shape up as though the water has got hold of his hair and is pulling it into the into the waves all right don't go straight through it pull it up so with his tail same thing applies I might come through there do all this and then when I get to there the water's carrying his tail as the waves lap back out, maybe. It puts some movement into the picture because the whole thing's really static. He's lying down and, um, you know, he's, he's being lazy and that's absolutely lovely and fine. But it's very still, all of it. And if you want it to stay still, that is good, that's fine. But I'm thinking to myself that just give it a bit of a drift and a bit of motion. The last thing I might think about with something like this would be, how about taking some glitter glue and running that through the sea? I think that that would be real fun, wouldn't it? Because it would give this all a bit of a twinkle or sprinkle some glitter on it. I, I would be definitely thinking about that. If you had a lady horse, find some gold paint and maybe she might have a little ankle bracelet on because she's on holiday. She might have an earring in. Um, you know, she might be lying on the beach with a bit of lipstick on just because she's, you know, um, out there trying to find herself a boyfriend. It could be, couldn't it? You don't know these things. What I haven't got, 
And what I would do, I think, is I would take a grey, this is my pale grey, and I just need to run a bit of shadow along underneath him to put him on the sand because at the moment he's lying in suspension so if we come in if we take that away from him there it makes it look as though that ear is above the ground but if we do that it kind of puts and we need a shadow here so we said the light was coming from over here didn't we somewhere so therefore I'm going to put my shadow of my glass up there somewhere There we are. So that, everybody, is our unicorn on holiday, sunning himself on the beach, maybe out to find a new lady friend. So next time I come back to you, maybe we'll paint him with his new girlfriend. So there you go. I'm so pleased that you could join me today. Let me just turn you around again so that I can talk to you. There we are. It's lovely to have had you with me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the weekend. If you've loved this, I just need to say to you that go and have a look at the Travelling Brush Dippers. And we, my friend and I, Denise Allen and myself, we have created an episode which explains to you exactly how this book was produced. My book how to draw unicorns. We've gone through it step by step from the first email I had from Search Press and their lovely contact and the story along the way, the drawings, how I did it, what I did and the frightening moments in between when I posted all of the artwork to Search Press. I can't tell you how I felt. So you can go and find that on the Travelling Brush Dippers. It's well worth a look and the lovely people who looked after me through that process. It's worth giving them a mention too because they've been marvellous as editors and as publishers. Enjoy your weekend, the rest of it. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a great pleasure to have you in the studio with me. I've loved every second of it. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come back and play with you again. All right, everybody. Bye-bye for now. See you again another day. Bye, everyone. Bye, unicorn lovers.